So a few months ago, we hit 100,000 subscribers on the channel. And I told you guys that I'd give you a quick video showing you around the new workshop and doing a big giveaway to say thanks. That's what this video is, so let's get started. Better late than never, right? So first of all, let me just say again, thank you. This, this means a lot to me, you guys. I, I never thought that I would get to this point. So yeah, that's awesome. So here's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna show you around the workshop, uh, show you some new tools that I've gotten since the last time that I did one of these videos, but you may have seen some of them in more recent projects. I'll do kind of a mini review, like 30 seconds of a couple of things that I like and don't like about them. And then I've got several things to give away, including a GPI case, Tiny Pi Pro kit, and even a fully assembled circuit gym from Kite, which is being put together by Marky Pie on Instagram. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. If that's all that you're here for, then feel free to skip ahead to the end of the video. Uh, but before I get into all that, I've got a couple of updates. First, I've got a new shop set up. It's shop.pseudomod.com. That's where you'll be able to get Minty Pie parts, Game Boy Zero parts, as well as some new stuff like keychains and stickers and coasters. So if you want a way to support the channel, then check it out. Another way that you can support the channel is through Patreon. I don't know why it took me so long to go ahead and set one up. I've had a lot of people ask about it in the past, uh, but here you go. It's nothing crazy. The highest tier is only gonna be a few dollars a month, uh, but you'll be able to get your name in the credits at the end of videos. I'm gonna start doing that. You'll be able to vote and help me decide on what projects to work on next. Uh, but if you do want a way to help support the channel and the community and pay for hosting and things like that, that's one way that you can do it. All right, so this is where I make stuff. Just a few months ago, this was our garage, and then we decided to spend a couple of weekends putting in insulation and doing some electrical work and turning it into a pretty nice workshop and game room. Prior to this, I had almost all of this crammed inside of a pretty small bedroom. I have no idea how I fit all of it in there, but it's been super nice to be able to stretch out, have more room to work on things, and leave half-finished projects set up as I work on them. Here along this wall, I've got just kind of a general purpose workbench. I keep a couple of my bigger tools here, like a drill press and a Lulzbot Taz 6. And it's also where I have my Raspberry Pi and single board computer test bench. Underneath here is where I store all of my 3D printing filament. About 95% of this comes from a company called Push Plastic. I really like using them because first of all, it's just good filament, I've always had good luck with it. But they're also local to me, so if I need something, I can just drive up there and get it instead of having to order it online. They're super nice guys too, and I like supporting them. Recently, they printed out this full-size workbench chair for me. They have a couple of gigantic, large format printers in their factory. This is about 28 pounds of PETG filament. Uh, you know, most of the time people think about printing out knickknacks and, and little toys and things like that with 3D printers. Uh, but yeah, if you have a big enough printer, you can print out full-size furniture. Huge thanks to them for doing that for me. Easily one of my favorite things in my workshop now. Next up, we've got the Glowforge. This is the laser that you may have seen me use in a couple of recent projects. It's a 45 watt CO2 laser, so it's strong enough to cut through materials like plastic and wood, leather and cardboard, things like that. A couple of things that I like about it, for one, it's just super easy to get up and running. Seriously, within like five minutes of taking it out of the box, you can be making your first cuts and etching things. I also really like how everything is self-contained inside this giant desktop printer looking box. All the fans to blow everything out the back, the cooling system, the coolant reservoir, all of that is self-contained. All that you need is a hole in the wall or a window to be able to vent out of. A couple of things that I don't like about it. First, the web interface that you have to use to be able to do anything with it. You can't just plug it into your computer and run an application to control it like you could with a 3D printer. You have to use their web interface so if their website goes down or it's super busy, you just can't do anything with it. The other big thing that it has going against it is the price. You can get lasers from China on AliExpress for a fraction of the price that are just as powerful. Granted, they're not nearly as easy to set up and get going, but yeah, for what it is, it's pretty expensive. And right next to the Glowforge is my soldering station. Last year when I did a video like this, I was using a model called the 898D+. Still a fantastic option and one that I recommend to people getting into electronics. This one is called the 853D and I upgraded to it for one feature in particular, which is the built-in power supply. If you're working on a project and you want to test something like maybe some LEDs, you can just set the voltage to exactly what you want and test it without having to mess with any kind of USB power supply or anything like that. It's super nice that feature has already come in handy several times and I've only had this for a few weeks. The only thing that I am not a fan of on this thing is the power switch on the back of it. Each of the individual components like the hot air rework gun and the soldering iron have their own individual power switches, but there's also one on the back that you have to flip off if you want to turn off these segmented displays on the front. 
but that's a minor complaint. Other than that, it's pretty much identical to the 898D+. It's got the same soldering iron with removable tips that are compatible with Hako brand tips, and basically the same hot air rework gun as well. So yeah, if you're looking for a step up from the 898, I've been pretty happy with this so far. I'll put links to both of those models in the description below. And next I've got what has kind of turned into a farm of Prusa printers. Last time I did one of these videos, I had one of the Mark III's from Prusa. I liked it so much that I wound up selling off my other printers to be able to get more of these. I still have the Taz 6. Uh, it's nice to have something that can print bigger parts and it does an especially good job with flexible filaments. Uh, but yeah, everything else I do on these guys. The print quality on them is pretty good. You can get similar results on much cheaper printers, but what makes them so great is all the quality of life features that they have on them. Things like the mesh bed leveling, filament sensors, crash detection. It can even detect if power is cut. I've got two of them hooked up to Raspberry Pis running Octoprint, and each of those have a palette too from Mosaic Manufacturing hooked up to it so that they can print in multiple colors at once. I've explained this in a couple of previous videos, but real quick, the way that they work, whenever it detects that you've reached a point in the print where it needs to change colors, it will cut the filament and splice it together with a new color. So as far as the printer is concerned, it's just printing with one continuous strand of filament. But in reality, it's changing colors throughout the print, and their software adds a purge block so that it moves off to the side whenever it needs to transition, so you get a nice sharp separation of colors. Honestly, it works way better than you would think that it would considering the way that it operates. Also, shout out to my friend 16-bit from the Discord server. He sent me this awesome print of a blown out schematic of a Prusa Mark III. Next, I've got my shipping station where I pack and ship stuff. Nothing exciting there. Here's another shrine to one of my favorite characters, Samus from Metroid. That's been another thing that I've loved about moving into here is having more room to display stuff like that. This is something new that I just added to my shop. I wanted to display my cartridges on the wall, so I came up with these 3D printed floating cartridge display stands. They stick to the wall with command strips and you can still take them down to play them. And I've got them for pretty much all the big Nintendo and Sega consoles. So yeah, if you want to display your cartridges on the wall like this, check out the link in the description. And then I've got my handheld collection. I actually don't have anything like too crazy or rare in here, uh, but it is nice to have room to be able to display all the projects that I've worked on and some of my favorite old consoles from growing up. Probably the most obscure thing that I have in my collection is this one right here, which is called the Open Pandora handheld. This came out several years ago. It's a Linux based handheld with, if I remember right, the same chip in it as the iPhone 3GS. I actually made a game for it at one point called Super Geometry Dust. It was like a mix between Super Stardust and Geometry Wars. And I actually had ported that to the iOS App Store at one point. I wound up abandoning it several years ago because a big iOS update broke it in a pretty big way. So uh, yeah, fun little fact there for you. And then this smaller workbench over here is where I keep all of my spare parts for Arduinos, sensors, uh, batteries, things like that. And it's also where I work from home about 90% of the time. I'm actually a software developer by day and the company that I work for is really friendly to working from home. So that's super nice. That does it for the workshop tour. I hope that that was at least interesting to you guys. I felt a little weird putting it together, but I had a lot of people ask for it. So there you go. Okay, so now for the part that most of you are probably here for. This is the biggest giveaway that I've done so far. I wanted to say thanks to you guys and I wanted to have several winners instead of just one like I normally do. So here's what I've got to give away. I've got a Cartboy from Postman and Novel, which I did a video for recently, a GPI case with a Raspberry Pi Zero, a Tiny Pi Pro kit from Moosper, AKA Pi Ocket, a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, all the parts that you need to put together a Minty Pi, including all of the electronics parts from Helder, all of the 3D printed parts from yours truly, and even a laser cut 10 from Helder. Also includes the Raspberry Pi Zero, so again, if you win that, you'd have everything that you need to sit down and put this together. And then the last one that I actually don't have here to show you is a circuit gym from Kite that's being assembled by Marky Pie on Instagram. He's a really nice guy and he offered to put it together for this giveaway. So yeah, super excited about that. He'll have a bunch of color options that you can select from. If you follow the link in the description, there will be an entry widget for each one of these prizes. You can enter for one or all of them. I wanted to separate them out like that so that you can enter to win the ones that you actually want to win uh, because I didn't want somebody to win a Minty Pie kit if they didn't have the equipment to put it together, for example. I'm gonna let this run for the next three weeks to give as many people as possible a chance to enter. So again, check out the link in the description. There'll be a blog post with all the entry widgets. 
this is all just to say thank you to you guys. You guys are awesome. Uh, I guess it's fitting that this is going up around Thanksgiving time. Uh, I hope that I can keep making videos that are interesting to you guys for a long time to come and hopefully get in the habit of doing them more often. Anyway, that does it for this one. As always, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.